I am a proud partner of Car Marshall. If you are interested in a new or used car, please check out Car Marshall. Click on the link in my description box below. No credit check, no cosigner. That's Car Marshall. Jack Johnson was born 1878 in Galveston, Texas. Jack's parents were slaves, and later they worked as a janitor and a dishwasher. Jack began boxing at an early age. Jack worked at a local boxing gym, and he saved up enough money to buy his own pair of gloves. Young Jack was obsessed with boxing. Jack used to participate in battle royal type of boxing matches. Jack used to slug it out with a bunch of little black boys just like himself. They'll get together and slug it out until the last man was standing. Jack was always the last man standing. They were cheered on and money thrown at him by a bunch of drunk white men. They used to watch this type of stuff for pleasure. As a teenager, Jack was making about $10 a fight. Now $10 a fight was more than what his whole entire family made in a week. So Jack was trying to fight as much as possible. This was the era of boxing where they didn't wear gloves. This was the era of boxing when there were no time limits. There were no rounds. There was no boxing commission. They didn't even have medics on deck. These fights went until someone was knocked out or somebody said that they quit. Even when boxing did become more civilized, they still have fights scheduled for 25 rounds and even up to 45 rounds. Even more than 45 rounds sometimes. Sometimes these guys will box for hours. Jack will go to town to town, from city to city, and even state to state. Jack would travel just to take on the best boxers available. And Jack started making a name for himself at an alarming rate. By the time Jack was in his 20s, he was making over $1,000 a fight, and that was way more than what Negroes made in a year. But Jack wanted bigger fights. Jack wanted to be world champ. Jack was fighting guys and laughing at them at the same time. Jack would play with you and then beat the brakes off you and help you up to your corner. Jack was a flashy guy. Jack wore the best clothes, Jack drove the best cars, and Jack always had women around him. Jack would speak to white folks like no other Negro would. Jack was arrogant. Jack used to throw money around all the time. And when Jack drove, if the speed limit was about 30, Jack would probably do 60. He got pulled over once for speeding and received a ticket. The fine was for $50. Jack gave the police officer a $100 bill. The police officer said, I don't have change for this. Jack said, just keep it. Because when I come back through here, I'll be speeding again. Jack was destroying his competition and he harassed the world champ Jim Jeffries for years. Jack chased this man all over the world, literally all over the world. Jack harassed him for a title shot, but Jim Jeffries wouldn't give it to him. Jim Jeffries said he refused to fight a Negro. And Jim said, no Negro should have a chance at the world title. And he retired shortly after that before giving Jack a fight. After that, Tommy Burns became the champ. And the same stuff that Jim Jeffries was pulling, now Tommy was pulling. After years of pressure on champ Tommy Burns, he finally agreed to fight Jack. Plus he was given an offer of $30,000. Burns accepted. Jack's offer was only $5,000. But Jack didn't care. Although he was set to make $25,000 less than Burns, it didn't even matter. 
because the legacy of being heavyweight champion of the world meant everything. It was the ultimate sign of strength and masculinity. On December 26, 1908, Jack Johnson versus Tommy Burns was about to go down. Jack blocking out all the racial slurs and derogatory remarks from the crowd. Jack steps into the ring and starts blowing kisses at the crowd. During the fight, Jack is touching his own body, telling Tommy where to hit him. Jack in there just playing with him, joking, laughing at him. Tommy punching him, and he's actually laughing at the man. At first, Jack was taking it easy on him, just clowning the guy. And then he started to turn up. Punch after punch after punch. Jack was just beating the brakes off this dude. After playing with him for 13 out of the 25 scheduled rounds, Jack came out in round 14 throwing like a maniac. Every punch, Jack was crushing him. I mean, brutalizing him. Every time Jack rocked him, when he seen he was going out and was about to fall, Jack would grab him so he wouldn't hit the ground. Jack refused to let him hit the canvas. Everything Jack threw at him was with bad intentions. So after he put them bangs on him, the police stopped the fight and shut the cameras off. Now Jack Johnson is world champ, champ of the world. The white race is now calling for Jim Jeffries to return out of retirement. They felt that Jim needed to come and save the white race. Someone needs to take this new girl out. In 1909, after literally obliterating all competition, Jack fought a boxer named Stanley Ketchum. But this was supposed to be just an exhibition match. During the match, Ketchum gets serious. He actually hit Jack so hard that he knocked him down. So Jack gets up and he hits Ketchum with enough force that he snaps all of his teeth out of his mouth. And when you watch the video, you can see Jack wipe his gloves. Those were Ketchum's teeth stuck in Jack's gloves. Now with no one else left to fight, everyone was calling for Jeffries to return. Jeffries started getting letters daily from civilians. The media started going crazy. The media started calling for Jeffries to return. All the newspapers was calling for Jeffries to return. So after a mountain of pressure, Jeffries finally agreed. They labeled this fight the fight of the century. The two best heavyweights in the world, a black man and a white man. Everyone has been waiting on this. Everyone's been waiting on Jack Johnson versus Jim Jeffries. And this was also the most money any boxer has ever made. The purse was set at $101,000. Gambling was everywhere. And white folks felt, finally, we got someone who can do the job. The New York Times wrote, If the black man wins, thousands and thousands of his ignorant brothers will misrepresent his win and justify claims of much more than physical equality with their white neighbors. People took pictures and recorded everything Jack Johnson and Jim Jeffries did for the next few months. This was the biggest event. No event was bigger than this. The fight was held in Reno, Nevada, and in 1910, the population of Reno, Nevada was a little over 16,000. Now they were in company of well over 10,000 fans for this fight. All the local restaurants ran out of food. All the hotels ran out of room. Traffic was crazy. Everything was ridiculous. July 4th, 1910. Now the fight was on. Jack walked to the ring and the hate was everywhere. The hate was intense. Jim walked to the ring 
and the crowd went crazy showing them love. As Jack walked to the ring, Jack taunted the crowd the entire way. During the fight, Jim Jeffries was no match, not even close. Jack was playing around with him, hugging him, slinging him around, tapping him, barely punching him. During the fight, Jack was having a conversation with Jim's corner for about eight rounds. Jack was laughing at Jim Jeffries. Jack started rubbing his back. And in the 15th round, Jack turned it up. Jack dropped Jim Jeffries several times. Now Jack has declared the winner. The winner of the biggest event of all time, the fight of the century. Everybody rushed the ring. All of Jack's supporters had to form a circle around him to ensure his safety. They had to form a circle around him just for his protection. The next day and leading the weeks, there were riots everywhere. Everywhere there were race riots from angry white mobs. People from all over started rioting. Due to the fight, they were taking their anger and frustrations out on black people. After the fight, Jim Jeffries gave it up to Jack. Jim said, in a thousand years, I would never be better than Jack Johnson. Even at my best, I wasn't better than Jack. I could have never beaten Jack Johnson. Congress wanted to sign a bill to destroy all boxing footage. Not only destroy all boxing footage, but to prevent boxing footage in the future. Just like in many other categories, they wanted to erase our history. They wanted to prevent the public from seeing these beatdowns Jack was putting on these dudes. After years of failed great white hope attempts, they held a tournament for our top heavyweight boxers. Of course, all white boxers. Jack sat ringside and laughed at the competition. Jack became the most popular Negro in the country, even bigger than Booker T. Washington who didn't approve of Jack Johnson. Here's Booker T. Washington's words on Jack Johnson. It is unfortunate that a man with money should use it in a way to injure his own people in the eyes of those seeking to uplift its race and improve its conditions. I wish to say emphatically that Johnson's actions did not meet my personal approval and I am sure they don't with the colored race. A man with muscles minus brains is a useless creature. Jack's arrogance is what Booker T. Washington had an issue with. Jack Johnson's downfall was his pleasures. His fetish for white women, his heavy drinking, and his sports cars. Jack's heavy drinking turned him into a monster. And Jack's fetish for white women landed him in prison. Jack got into a lot of trouble over white women. Jack got locked up over the Mann Act, which was passed by Robert Mann in 1910. It was actually created just because of Jack Johnson. The Mann Act forbade transporting a woman across state lines for immoral purposes. And Jack's need for speed all led to his demise. Jack loved those sports cars. In 1946, Jack Johnson died in a car accident. Jack was speeding in Raleigh, North Carolina on US Highway 1. Jack gave people hope. Jack demanded respect. Jack looked white supremacy in the face and refused to lay down. One of the OGs 
and our first champ, Jack Johnson. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit the thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. And let me know what you think in the comment section. Parents, please subscribe to History With No Chaser for Kids. Just type in HWNC for kids. And gentlemen, I have been requested by many to tell just how I knocked out so many of my opponents. As far as I'm concerned, that day has gone. And today, I have a new way in knocking them out. And I will show you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.